Welcome back everyone. It's 418 of 2015. We're going to look at uh, Jensen's uh, fifth lesson on ecclesiology uh, as the doctrine of uh, the church's communion. And it's going to be a, a three-moment uh, lesson on body, head, and identity. The uh, Soma Koinonia, as the fellowship as the body of Christ, is a gathering fellowship as a sign of contributing to the uh, Tordes Christos uh, future fulfillment of the kingdom. It does include a discernment of the Eucharist as communion with Christ, sharing in Christ's body and sharing in Christ's deity. And it also means that the, uh, the fellowship does enclose a corporate understanding of its uh, speech act of the gospel, which it holds in common as a corporate subjectivity. As the attribute of love, it simply means that there's a uh, the availability of one subject or one member for another, uh, that reciprocity of fellowship, and it's where Christ can be addressed and grasped. Now the association as bride is also mentioned, and that's the self-critical moment for Jensen where the church can examine itself internally and uh, work toward revision and reform as a kind of a communal asceticism whenever necessary. As head, Jensen appropriates the Greek concept of kephale. Uh, the body of Christ as a fellowship appropriates the head, and it's best understood uh, by appropriating Hegel's master-slave parable of self-consciousness. It uh, is the moment of uh, our intending and grasping of each other reciprocally as subjects, and we encounter Christ as the embodied subject within the fellowship. So it's uh, an evolving, communal, subjective, corporate self, consciousness, progressing at its own self-understanding. So it uh, is a corporate self-consciousness of the essence of Christ's logos. He appropriates the Greek concept kephale because it uh, does literally translate as head, but it metaphorically is translated sometimes in the New Testament as the cornerstone of self-conscious alignment. It's that uh, corporate alignment of self-conscious mind within the fellowship, our corporate understanding of our own um, corporate subjectivity uh, enclosing the essence of Christ as Logos. So it's a great picture of corporate self-consciousness and it is the key moment of under understanding ourselves as the body of Christ. Uh, so your second moment is always the key moment in a triad. This takes us to the realized identity, which is a combination of the body and the head to uh, reach that hidden word that is enclosed in the mystery of the Eucharist. It unveils the prophetic promise that we do drink the cup anew in the kingdom to come and that we do speak the anticipatory come Lord of an eschatological Maranatha. And the Eucharist equals our visible, anticipated prophetic understanding. It is a rite of thanksgiving. It's a prayer, which is a given visual presentation as a prayer of objects. And it encloses all of Israel's entire eschatological hope. And it makes the Christian church actually a historical visibility. But of course, the most important aspect of this lesson by Jensen is the the unique way that he appropriates the parable of master slave from Hegel in order to uh, relate it to the Eucharist and relate it to corporate self-consciousness within the church and as the proper interpretive tool for understanding the Greek concept of kephale as self-conscious alignment, that aligning collective corporate self-understanding that the church possesses. So a very important uh, moment in his lesson, and it's uh, probably a better definition of kephali. I mean, we'd see uh, New Testament translations as head or cornerstone, uh, rarely as a capstone, but sometimes as capstone to a doorway. But uh, kephali is best understood as a, the aligning corporate self-consciousness within the fellowship for Jensen. And he appropriates, appropriates the term as a corporate self-understanding. So it's a great way to uh, understand the body of Christ and its own self-consciousness. 
and uh, a pretty unique way of uh, appropriating Alexander Kojiv's interpretation of Hegel, uh, because Kojiv was the uh, Russian-born French philosopher who actually posited the idea that the master-slave parable was uh, a depiction of a singular internal self-consciousness to be developed in Hegel's philosophy. And uh, through Kojiv, Jensen appropriates the same idea for uh, the kafale of the cornerstone of the church. As, uh, it becomes an aligning self-consciousness and uh, an alignment that uh, is progressively um, unveiled and disclosed to the membership as we uh, reciprocally uh, communicate with each other in a, a dialectic of knowing and a dialectic of action. So through our dialectical involvement, uh, we do a progressively unveil the truth of our own corporate self-understanding of how Christ is the logos and the essence of our fellowship. And more specifically, Christ is the rhema voice of the Logos essence of God the Father. Because the Father is the Logos, the Son is the rhema voice, and the Spirit is the logikos, raising up of reality and gathering. So Christ technically is the rhema voice of the Logos, but to understand this essence of Logos, we need to be involved in that uh, progressive development of our own corporate self-consciousness and our own corporate subjectivity within our fellowship. And we learn to do that and we unveil that truth by engaging in a theological dialogue and a theological study and discernment and a true, true dialectical unveiling. And it gives us a great understanding of the Greek concept of kephale, it's something much more than just the literal concept head or the concept of cornerstone. It becomes much more uh, important and uh, central to our Christian fellowship if we understand it as the alignment of corporate self-consciousness. And that's the best way to depict his understanding of the church's communion. It is a dialectical communion or a dialogical communion of kephale as an aligning corporate self-consciousness. And that will wrap up this lesson, which takes us up through 2-2-1.